Don't ever confuse it, guys. What you do is not who you are. Have you ever met anyone who is famous, might be a celebrity or the head of an industry, and you walk away from this meeting, whatever the meeting might be, and you think to yourself, or even you say aloud, oh, she's so nice. He was so nice. He actually took us a few seconds and he talked to me. And you know, you think it is, you're actually in shock. Like, like it wasn't supposed to be that way. Like it's, we've, we've come to a place in our world and in society to where people who hold certain titles you, you, it's almost like an anomaly. Like it's not supposed to be when you figure out that or, or when you have the opportunity to meet them and they were actually nice people, you know? And it just got me thinking because so many of you guys, you're on this journey and you're moving up in the company and you know, you're starting your business and your business is really starting to boom. You know, guys, be real clear. There is a major distinction between what you do and who you are. You know, so often we get caught up in our identity of what we do for a living. News alert, that is occupation. That's profession. It should never get so intertwined with your ego to where you're feeling as though because I hold a certain prestigious position on my title, you know, on my business card says vice president, president, or whatever it might say, it gives me a license to be a dick, to not be a good human being because at the, at the core of it all, guys, we're, oh, we're human. We are just human beings. What we do for a living is just that. I remember working at, at when I was young, you know, um, I worked at an old folks home, an elderly home, senior citizens home, whatever you might want to call it. And we had a, uh, and I was a dishwasher in the kitchen. And our supervisor, this woman was hell on wheels. This woman was a complete raging lunatic because she was the supervisor at a retirement home. And I used to come to work, like, first and foremost, my best days at work were the days that she didn't work. But when we actually worked at the same time during the same shift, I used to look at this woman like, yo, you do realize you are not working in a five-star restaurant kitchen, right? You, you understand you driving a Nissan Sentra. Like, what is possibly on you? She got so wrapped up into her title and into the fact that she was the supervisor over the kitchen staff and little old me who was washing dishes in the back. The woman just completely lost it. You're a human being. Treat people with respect. Be nice. But here's the real kicker. I remember seeing the woman outside of the job. And she still walked around with this air of arrogance. I was, are you, like, like we're supposed to actually, for one, I don't respect you, but number two, outside of the job, do you really think that that title follows you? Just in, I mean, we're not equal in terms of being human beings that if you see me in the street, you can actually speak to me as one adult to another adult? You gotta be kidding me. Now, I've held positions in my life from intern, coordinator, director, vice president, president, and CEO. You know, going from what people are calling me Sean Prez to Mr. Prez. And you learn a few things along this journey. Like, number one, everybody is replaceable. Guys. Do not get high on your own supply. Don't get caught up in your own hype. Stop believing, you know, when you look in the mirror, you are so superior and you are one of one that it is absolutely improbable, impossible. It will never happen that you can be fired, replaced. However, 
you are replaceable. Yes, you. So as you're sitting and you're watching this video, be real clear. That position was filled before you got there and it will be filled after you leave. You know, when, when I was young, um, big NBA fan, at that time, Magic, Bird, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, you know, he actually had the league on his back. These guys were running the league, but they aged out. New crop of players come in, Shaq, Kobe, AI, so forth and so on. They age out. New crop of players come in. LeBron, Steph Curry, Westbrook, you know, all, all of the new guys. You're replaceable. You are. So get over yourself. Another thing that I learned was titles, power, money, they don't change people. What they do is allow those people who now have a certain title, have a little extra money and a little extra power. It allows you to be the person that you always wanted to be. You know, get over yourself. People, don't be confused. Money doesn't change you. What it does is give you the access to show your behind, really act out, and be that small, egotistical, ego-driven person that you've always wanted to be. Again, what you do should never be who you are. Another thing that I've learned, no matter how high you go up on the totem pole, there's always room to learn. There's always room to gain knowledge because you're never, you don't know it all. You just don't. You know, I don't care if you're the CEO of a company. Sitting down and having lunch with the assistant, the intern, the coordinator. Do you know how much value is in that? Because they are much closer to the ground than you are and probably ever will be again. They are the ones that hold the pulse of the industry in the streets because they're still living it. They're still part of it. They're not at the upper echelon of the company where they don't have the opportunity to, you know, go out and experience the culture firsthand. Please understand, guys, I don't care what your business card says. I don't care how many people admire you. I don't care what you've done yesterday. You can still learn from others. Learning should never stop, ever. You know, as many of you guys know, I am a huge fight fan, you know, and I sort of recently saw this interview with the heavyweight champion of the world uh, um, in boxing, um, Anthony Joshua, and I've always liked him as a boxer, but I'm really liking him as a human being. And they asked him a, a, a question in the interview. They said, what is the, what's the hardest part about being a boxer? And his answer was simple. There's no hard part about being a boxer. He's like, being a boxer is a blessing. But if I wasn't a boxer, it would still be a blessing. You know, I'm just blessed to be here. And for him, he was like, you know, wealth comes in character, not in status. And that's something that I think is so poignant and people should really understand True wealth, true wealth, it's measured, it's measured in character, who you are, not who you are at the office, but who you are in your own household, who you are to your friends and your neighbors, who you are in the community. And these are the things that, that I really want people to walk away from this video understanding, like Anthony Joshua he sold out Wembley Stadium. That stadium holds 90,000 people. 90,000 people. If he has a level of humility and can attract that many people to come to this stadium in London to see him fight, spend their hard-earned money, what's your excuse for being a dick?
What's your excuse for not being a nice person? Don't ever confuse it, guys. What you do is not who you are. Peace and love. Make every move a power move, and I'll catch you all in the next video. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.